The COVID-19 pandemic has dealt a heavy blow to many of the country's businesses. In fact, some had to close their doors permanently amid the COVID-19 lockdown and others have been forced to downsize. This has also affected the people who work for these businesses. So to talk more about the impact of COVID-19 on the country's businesses and how government can help save lives while protecting livelihoods, I'm joined now by Martin Kingston from Business for South Africa. Martin, always a pleasure speaking to you. And I mean, I remember during the time of the harder lockdown restrictions being implemented in 2020, we saw what could be described as a jobs bloodbath and also a business bloodbath. As we moved to lower lockdown uh, regulations, we saw slight recovery. But really, how much greater of an impact has COVID-19 had on businesses in this country? Well, good evening, Faith. We've seen, of course, an extraordinarily uh, significant level of both job shedding and contraction in the economy last year, as you said. Uh, we emerged from it this year with some level of recovery, but we know it's going to be a long time both to be able to get back onto a sustainable level of economic growth and also to be able to regenerate sustainable jobs, uh, particularly but not only for small and medium-sized enterprises, those that were the most severely affected by the pandemic last year. And we know that the third wave, of course, is upon us. And as you were discussing, we need to roll out the vaccine program as quickly as we can, both in the face of both the third wave and the advent of winter. And it's going to be a very difficult balancing act. What we need to ensure is that we don't place any greater restrictions uh, on economic activity than is absolutely necessary. Yeah, I mean, small and medium enterprises have felt it the most. Have these businesses managed to recover as yet? No, they haven't. There was a significant support that was given to them by their uh, bankers, the banks that were already lending to them, and government, as we all know, uh, provided a significant amount of additional assistance over the course of the last year. Most of that has now been fully utilized, and we have limited fiscal space. And so, unfortunately, people are going to have to rely upon the fact that we've got limited restrictions, as I said. We're going to have to put in place very significant uh, uh, structural reforms as a country. We're speaking to government about that mm. all the time, particularly to assess small and medium sized. Uh, uh, businesses as they try and recover uh, from uh, last year. But this year we're going to see, I think, an extended uh, level of restrictions as a consequence of the third wave. And it's going to take time uh, to recover to the extent uh, that that's possible, uh, to the levels that we saw before. In fact, we went into recession, uh, which, of course, was the situation for all of last year. Yeah, I mean, we're talking here about the president in a few minutes' time addressing the nation and perhaps imposing level two of a lockdown. As businesses, small enterprises and medium enterprises, in fact, are still trying to recover from the lockdown of the first wave or the second wave in itself, what impact are we likely to see um, have on, on smaller businesses as well as medium enterprises should the president announce more stringent lockdown measures? Well, I would hope that those lockdown measures won't actually have any particular impact on small and medium-sized enterprises. We as business have advocated that there should be restrictions on the number of people that can gather. Uh, we think that curfew hours should probably be extended both at night and into the morning. We don't think there should be any further restrictions on interprovincial uh, travel or other mm. forms uh, of transportation. Uh, but of course, that doesn't mean that there's not going to be a consequence when people uh, stay at home when they don't gather. Uh, and, of course, as I said, we need to at the same time roll out the vaccine program, particularly for those above 60, on a very aggressive basis. And what I would want to emphasize is, and all of us have seen this, is that we need to continue the behaviors that we learned last year of social distancing, mask wearing and hand washing that I think many people have forgotten about and they need to start uh, to observe once again. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times in the business fraternity, there's a lot of speak about agility and being able to innovate during this time. But really, is there room for businesses to innovate and be agile? No, we have seen innovation. There's absolutely no doubt the ability for people to work from home, uh, a very significant increase in the level uh, of dependence upon uh, uh, IT and, uh, and indeed the fourth industrial revolution we've seen come to the fore. And people have demonstrated extraordinary innovation in terms of how they can bring businesses to bear, how they can support existing businesses. But the reality, nevertheless, is uh, that we're going to have to be very cautious about how we uh, uh, take business forward on a steady basis uh, in the face, as I said, of uh, very significant economic headwinds uh, as a consequence not just of the pandemic, but of the circumstances we were already in we were already witnessing before that, as I said, we were downgraded as a country, uh, we were in recession, uh, we're going to have to take very significant steps as a country to pull ourselves out of 
uh, those very difficult circumstances and achieve sustainable economic recovery is not going to happen, I'm afraid, uh, in 2021. We're going to have a two or three year period to return to the levels of economic activity that we experienced, for example, in 2018 and 19. Martin King, so we'll leave it there for this evening. The head of economic work group at uh, Business for South Africa giving us uh, the latest on that matter. And Tim Megillah, you know, as we're speaking mm -hmm. about business and the impact that business, uh, you know, is having really on livelihoods and jobs mm -hmm. um, in itself, one wonders, can small and medium enterprises actually afford another lockdown? And can they actually innovate to the point of surviving at this time around? And it's not so pretty, the mm -hmm. picture as it is right and now. And I suppose it's not just about the restrictions themselves at this yeah. stage, but also how long they stay in place because thankfully around Easter, a lot of business people were quite relieved that the lockdown wasn't so long mm. that it could do too much harm. So we'll wait to see when President Sora Maposa speaks in about seven minutes from now to see what in new measures will be announced and how long they're likely to stay in effect. Stay with